Hey everyone! In my Scratch Build Mac Diorama I uploaded about a month ago, someone suggested this idea in the comments. Dude, if you're watching this, let me tell you that I don't want to get in your head. Anyway, I've never built a swamp scene, never made a robotic dragon, let alone a flesh and blood one. Let's start and see how this is gonna go. So I chose some basic items from the bits box to start. I'll use this PVC pipe to make a spine to build everything on. I'll use these plastic cutlery for its leg assembly. These pieces look like they could be claws. These flossing sticks have a nice curve to fit on the wings. I chose this knight figure to be rider of the dragon. I'm marking the spots on the PVC pipe and cut some grooves until I get an enough bent shape. With the leftover part of the pipe I'm cutting another piece to build the tail on. making it longer by adding a conic shaped plastic bottle cap. This piece fits nicely and I'll build its head around it. For its head, I'll use the soap bottle pump piece and the milk lid for a mouth. I'm cutting off the excess part for a perfect fit. I'm using bottle caps for the leg sockets and plastic cutlery for the legs. Now I started to picture how its neck gonna look better if I extend the distance between the head and the back. So I'm cutting it off and using whatever plastic bottle cap I could find to make this a good fit. Doing so I could rearrange the head's position. This plastic hanger looked okay to build the feet on. At this point I'm not really following a plan, instead going with the flow. Whatever interesting piece I find around, I put it on the body. I found this dowel and immediately gave me the idea to weaponize the dragon's tail. Using these deodorant caps to buff up the body, bulkier it is, more space for me to add details later. These bottle cap ring things, I don't really know what they're called. I'm using them to give extra armor or mechanical details. I was wondering how I would keep on building the head, then I noticed the plastic knife tips. Their angle fit perfect for the head. Then I immediately looked for the forks and decided to build its horns with them. At this point in the build there was so much residue from the CA glue and baking powder, I decided to clean them off and clean up the tail to later cover up the gap on it. To cover up that gap on the tail, I cut off open-ended bendable rings from the PVC pipe. 
This will both cover up the huge gap and will look like armor plating once it's painted. I'm using these plastic strips and plus sticks to build the wings on. Marking the strips and bend them with soldering iron. Each bend section will represent a mechanical joint in the final work. I'm using extra baking powder to strengthen the parts where wings are connected to the body. I was going to use baby wipes for the wings, but then I decided to go with the foil. This fit the beast better in my mind since the dragon is mechanical. Once I'm done with the wings, I started adding details. I'm mainly using jewelry bits for this. Once I'm done with everything, I primed it then applied the bronze color craft paint, mixed with some black, then dry brushed the entire thing with bronze only. It's now time to paint the details. I decided to paint the eyes with Vallejo's emerald thread, painted the rivets with liquid chrome pen, oil is steel for the wing joint bits and the tail tip. Again, liquid chrome pen for where I want to show more metallic parts. And Vallejo's bronze color for details to differentiate and highlight certain parts, like the horns and the armor plating on the tail.
Now I'll start preparing the figures. I'm using brownish colors in general and steel color for their helmets and tiny metallic details. For these figures who I'm considering as the bandits ambushing the dragon and its rider in this diorama scene. I'm painting the knight with oily steel color and adding gold color to give him a rich, noble look. Now onto the vegetation. I made some tall grass, or stems if you will, off the camera. Dipping them into PVA glue and then into some rough yellow pigments to create a marsh type vegetation. Whenever I find a cable laying around, I salvage what's inside the plastic shield. I'm making the trees with some of those wires here. I had this millipod terracotta laying around and wanted to give it a try making one of the trees with it. It's definitely harder to work with compared to other millipod types and feels heavier once dried. I made a second tree with millipod super fine, that's how I feel the uh, weight difference. Giving them various coats of primer, first coat, second coat, etc. I first planned on keeping the vines brown, then decided to use Revel's fern green and olive green which looked more marshy in my opinion. I'm applying two different homemade flocks with multiple coats of hairspray and then I'm done with them. I cut an MDF board 24 by 24 centimeters and cut styrofoam as a diorama base. Once the piece is dried, I sketch up what goes where and punch certain areas where I'll pour epoxy later. Making rock faces with more styrofoam and gluing wall plaster rocks I made a while ago. After that I apply black craft paint to cover every spot and paint the rocky areas with various tones of grey.
Once the base is complete, I start putting stems in the actual swamp where the epoxy will be. I made a couple of bonds with extra millipot while I was working on the trees. Figured they would be fitting in a swamp scene. This rock looks really like a skull. It was gifted to me by a friend of mine a long long time ago. He also has a YouTube channel if you like gaming content. I'm leaving his channel up there. Give him a visit and say hi by me. I didn't think about the hollow bottom of one of the trees. At this point I got away with adding thick block to cover up the gap. Once everything is where they are supposed to be, I seal this side with masking tape and cross my fingers that it won't leak. In order to achieve a murkier look, I added 3 drops of Vallejo green brown color in the mix. And since everything is clumped up and I don't really have the steadiest hands, I poured the entire resin with the help of a dropper. Luckily, the masking tape worked, no leakage. Stripped off some of the paint, but it's an easy fix with the same black paint. In order to decrease the glossiness of the resin, I dabbed some PVA glue on it. Once it dries, it gets transparent. I made a saddle for the rider with Millipod Superfine of the camera and gluing it on the dragon. And I sacrificed an extra figure to add a gory detail. As usual, thank you so much for watching this video. Your support weighs a lot, so like this video if you did and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe for the upcoming content. And as always, I'm open for your ideas, leave them in the comment section. Until next time, stay safe.